Hi Virgo, welcome to your general tarot scope for the period between November 1st and 14th. And actually on the 14th of November, you have a full moon in your ninth house, which deals with the higher mind. And uh, this includes academia, this includes, you know, university level studies. This also includes your philosophical framework. This could include anything related to foreign travel and publishing. So because Virgo is such a literary sign, I, I would say, because you are ruled by Mercury, so you do have that part to you. Maybe some of you are fin finishing your great American or great English or great Australian or great insert whatever country, great Indian novel. And um, so that's when you're finished with that. Um, I want to say too that I'm going to just talk about a few transits before I um, lay out the cards. I'm shuffling right now. I'm doing this so that I can give you more of a, uh, you know, wide, um, uh, <laughs> just, uh, just more to this reading than just the typical uh, cards. Okay, let's put it that way. Uh, the other thing that is going on is that you have Mars going into Aquarius on the 8th or the 9th of November. And actually, uh, that means that before that, during the first week of November, Mars will be in Capricorn, which is your sister Earth sign. And this forms a nice angle to you. This is a, a trine aspect. This is the fifth house of romance. So for the first week, uh, you know, there's going to be some kind of emphasis or energy put into this particular area of your life. So it could be that you're just on the hunt for Ms. or Mr. Right. It could be that you are trying to have children. The fifth house can be children, so you're like actively trying to have children. And, you know, you know what you're doing if you're doing that. Um, and uh, what else? Um, very creative uh, period for you, perhaps, um, in terms of art artistic projects. Um, the fifth house also rules that, so there may be a lot of activity with that. Um, but there can be, because Mars can be kind of almost like a combative influence. Any of these areas could be effective, affected in that way as well. So if you've been dating someone, you know, you might start to bicker with them or just um, have some kind of contentious situation. I mean, it could be fighting over something related to a child, you know. Um, you know, there's many different possibilities. But then it goes into your health and work sector. And this could be a time when you're just like really busy with work. You know, you just are up to your eyeballs in work or, you know, you're getting physical with your health. You know, you're deciding to, to start a physical uh, a regimen. Uh, maybe you are noticing something uh, specific, you know, that you need to deal with with your health and, you know, of the acute variety. But there's something very active that is happening with your health, possibly. But it might just relate to your work life. And it's and maybe your workload is just really happening. Venus. Now, where is Venus going to be? Well, Venus is going into Capricorn on the, on the 11th, actually, I believe. So Venus is going on the 11th. So that means that... Before that date, it's going to be in your fourth house, which happens to be your house of home and family. Um, when it's in that fourth house, it can be very nice for any kind of, like if you've had any kind of uh, uh, rift with anyone in your family, you might heal that. It can be bringing money to something related to real estate or your family. Um, that you profit somehow from that or you receive money in some way from that. Um, but then it goes into that fifth house. So Venus is in this house, which it's very compatible with because love is one of the areas that the fifth house uh, deals with. So it could make you very 
charming to any potential partners that you're looking to attract and just bring harmony to any kind of dating situation that you're in. Um, for an artist, it's a godsend because it can give you that sense of um, aesthetics that allow you to create the most beautiful art imaginable. And then the following day on the 12th, um, Mercury will be going into, well, it's been in your third house, it's going to be going into your fourth house. So that will be a time of maybe um, more communication with your family of origin, more negotiation, maybe you're selling a house and that's where that Venus comes in. Uh, and so you're going to be doing a lot of talking about the property. So that's what's going on for the first half. And now on to the cards. Gosh, I just keep getting that nine of cups, no matter what. The overall energy is the Hierophant card. So this is um, a card that deals with things related to the clergy. Um, I told you about that you're having a full moon in the ninth house. This is kind of like what the ninth house represents. Uh, why it's associated with Taurus, I have no clue. It should be with this, with Sagittarius because it also deals with higher education. But definitely with... Um, and some of the uh, traditions that we have in our society, like marriage, it also deals with marriage, but there's that religious element sometimes. Um, so perhaps something is happening. Maybe that full moon is a time that really highlights the Taurus full moon is a time that really highlights to you Virgo what exactly oh Virgo this is you Virgo you're the hermit so uh, it's very funny I didn't even think of it that way but you know kind of highlight something to you about life you know the bigger picture so to speak and it could be you know because of anything a lot of times um, you know, we have something that I'm, I'm, I'm putting in air quotes, negative happen, that allows us to see things in a bigger picture. So let me look at the recent past to get a feel for this. And this is a very good card, actually. Ten of Pentacles, the inheritance card, family money, family business, you just being very prosperous. Now, I could just say something like this. I could say, maybe you had your dreams come true. Kind of bring it a little, a little closer. Maybe you had your dreams come true. Maybe you had something happen that you always wanted and then once you got it, it was like, is that all there is? I don't know. Um, but the Hierophant is about seeing things from the philosophical perspective. It can be that perhaps you, you were with uh, somebody who's an earth sign um, and you're getting married. I mean, it could be something totally different, but with the family money situation, it could have been that you received an inheritance um, and you still realize that your life is not necessarily uh, changed on the fundamental level. So it's like you get something that you wanted so badly and then once you have it, you realize that there's more than meets the eye, that it's not enough to have the money. Uh, but th but it, this is like 
a nice problem to have, <laughs> you know, the Ten of Pentacles, because it's something very, uh, very prosperous. If not directly from your family, then with you personally, with your own business. And so it definitely could have that, that um, work connection where it's something very, very um, abundant coming in for you. And this would have been the recent past. So if you're watching in October, I'm, I'm recording this on the 26th of October. So maybe it's something that has already happened. As a matter of fact, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. Yeah, it sounds like something really good has happened to you. And of course, you did have your solar eclipse in Virgo. On September 1st so maybe good things have been happening to you and you've had a whole new start in some way but this is the the energy that's coming in so you being more reflective being more uh, on the inside seeking that inner light rather than uh, going into that the outside world to kind of gain clarity or peace of mind the, the, you know, the, the stark contrast is the higher message because it's showing this. Now, this is almost indulgent, which is not the typical. It's number nine, just like that hermit in the major arcana is number nine. Number nine, you know, it's a very interesting number. You know, remember that the Beatles, they had that song, number nine, number nine, because it kept featuring in their you know, the, the 9th of November was when they signed their first contract with Brian Epstein. And um, I always say Epstein. Um, but they, but, but you know, and, and John Lennon was born on the 9th of October. But um, the number 9 is associated with um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the number 9 is associated with um, the humanitarian vibration and so it is you know it's kind of funny because it's also so associated with Jupiter I think because it's the ninth house or the ninth house is where Jupiter is at Sagittarius so I'll have to check into that more if, if any of you uh, are into numerology and you want to talk about that but it is a number that is associated with a person who is um, a spiritual seeker okay so definitely it has that connotation but here we are with the cups and yet it's a self-indulgent energy so I think it's more going into that Jupiter influence of the ninth house um, of you know kind of like excess that you know Jupiter sometimes gets involved with and yet Jupiter is associated also with um, a lot of um, beneficial um, or, 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 you know, uh, lucky kind of energy, expansive energy. So it's like kind of, it's not that one, you know, excess, it, it's an embarrassment of riches. Let's put it that way. So it's, so saying it's excessive is not saying it's bad at all. You know, it's an embarrassment of riches. Um, but then that, that, that hermit is so stripped down, you know, it's like, what's that all about? Well, uh, the number nine month is, is September, and that's when Virgo is around. And the, and the number nine is also a number of endings. So there's always that association with, you know, at least in North America, we have the fall and we have or autumn. And um, just that, that sense of like one door closing, another opening, um, and that period of reflection of being of going within. You know, Virgo's a feminine sign, so Virgos tend to be more introverted instead of that extroverted energy of the yang or the masculine signs like the fire and the air signs are. Um, I just got I have to tell you this too, just because I'm such a um, into uh, these dates and stuff. Uh, February 9th was also when the Beatles played in America for the first time, I believe. So there's another nine for you. Okay, so um, what does this mean? Well, again, you know, some the Buddha says that there are different causes of suffering, and one of them is getting what you want. So you may have gotten what you want, but you still are... Um, looking for more and this could have been a person 
You know, you could have had the person of your dreams and now you're not so sure. Now you're kind of soul searching. This is about soul searching. Uh, for some reason, even though you had your yes card, uh, you've had your dreams answered and your and, and your prosperity, everything is going good in the material world. But what about your soul, your soul's journey? What's happening with that? So there may be this feeling of like, okay, what's going on? And this is very interesting. What crosses you is the Wheel of Fortune. So this was in the, 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 the um, challenge position. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is connected to Jupiter. Oh, here's the other connection. Um, you have, now Jupiter is in Libra. So it's in your second house. So, um... You know, it could be that you're really doing well financially, but perhaps you realize that there was something more that you have been wanting. Maybe you've, um, you know, it could be one of those things, the typical things of like, yeah, I'm getting what I want in a certain way, but it's not coming in the way that I wanted it. You know, I want a relationship, but I, I'm not sure that this person, um, by the way, the the this is I just said it was associated with Taurus and this is another Pentacles card so that could be a Taurus person who is there but for some reason maybe that person is not maybe there's too much indulgence maybe you're se you have sexual chemistry and you don't have the um, you don't have that connection of the souls um, and that's what is lacking and this and this is just saying, you know, you have all this good stuff happening. Maybe it's just like, again, you know, you're you're a sign. I have the the moon in, in Virgo. Um, it's a sign of simplicity, Virgo, and so we like simple living. And maybe you are feeling maybe this person is too much of an influence of like, eat, drink, and be merry, and not enough uh, wheatgrass and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Kundalini Yoga or something like that, you know, it's it's just too, it's, it, there's certain things you have in common, you know, maybe you uh, have this kind of a business connection or something like that, but you don't have the other parts are not, you know, kind of falling into place for you with this other person. Um, but again, this could be, this could be career, this could be, um, this could be just simply that you are being fulfilled financially but not in in the um, in that soul level that you want to do something specific to you and you don't feel like you're you're accomplishing that for some reason the advice is the five of swords oh boy this is some advice now it could be you know sometimes with the five of swords you know I always associate with underhanded behavior on somebody else's part so it, it you know, um, the positive way of looking at it, I think, might be just to have more of a flexible outlook. Like because the f number five is an unstable number, it it indicates change. It may even be connected with your ruler Mercury, I think. So you know, because the the swords are connected to your thoughts, it's, it, it's really like about not being too rigid in your belief system and allowing change to take place because even if you're right now you're raking it in but you feel empty inside you know if it's not like bothering you that much if it's not like just like totally wearing you out you can use this time in the meantime to kind of figure out what it is exactly that you want let's say you want to start your own business you know you can do that on your own um, and be able to understand um, what it is that is, um, you know, most in alignment with you. Because I was just thinking about this um, Five of Swords. I think it also, sometimes in a positive sense, can indicate, um, you know, taking what you can from a situation that is of benefit. Maybe something is really like, you know, craptastic, but there's something good in it. 
you know, to some degree, you know, and that's what I was saying. If the money is really good, you know, money is not evil. Um, you know, if you're not hurting other people to get it and you're not um, betraying your own sense of your own um, ethical framework, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. But if you feel unfulfilled, um, just understand that you can change that around. It just may take some time. And, you know, sometimes that, that's the, the, the paradox about life. You know, you work so hard towards something, you finally get it, you know, you finally get to that point, and then it's like, okay, now what? And you realize, oh yeah, that's right, I have a soul, and it has its own needs. And the same thing with relationships. This person, I thought that was so good for me, and it turns out that they're good for me on one level, but they're not good for me... Um, on all levels. And I just thought of something. You could even be married to this person. Maybe the marriage is in question. Um, the outcome is the Knight of Cups. So this is kind of like more of that energy of being, you know, it's actually a very creative, artistic energy. So it may be something along the lines. And I said, didn't I say about Mars? Uh, being in that um, fifth house for, you know, about the first week. So um, maybe that's what you wanted to do. Maybe you have always wanted to do something creative. And even starting your own business is creative. You're creating something. That's creative. You're coming up with ideas for it. That's creative. So all of these things are um, pieces of the puzzle. And they're kind of like symbols of what may be going on for you. They're not necessarily literally uh, or chronologically in order for you, but they may be kind of what's a snapshot in the first half of the month where, you know, you have that certain sense of um, just the creative mind, the gentle, the intuitive, the nurturing, energy. This is great for attracting to you a partner who is going to be more of that. So maybe you were with somebody who was an earth sign and maybe you're going to end up with somebody who is a water sign, who is going to nourish your earth. You know, you're an earth sign. You, you know, I was going to say you need to have your water, your earth watered. But, um, you know, I'm not saying that every earth sign needs to be with a water sign individual, but it sure is nice because um, they can provide for you. You can be rather dry being an earth sign and unemotional, and they can provide that balance. Um, I don't know if, you know, the Knight of Cups is associated with a particular water sign, but the water signs are Cancer and Scorpio and Pisces. Now we are in the time of Scorpio. So um, whether or not that person turns out to be a Scorpio is another story. But um, I, when I think of this card, because it seems so gentle, I think more of a um, Cancer and a Pisces. No offense to any Scorpios out there, but Scorpio is, to me, a little bit fierce sometimes, even though it's a water sign. It's not necessarily that gentle. Of course, everybody, you know, mileage may vary depending on what um, other signs and planets exist. So that's certainly not going to fit 100% across the board. But, um, but this person, if this is another person, which it could be, being in the, in the court cards, that person is going to be a very um, caring influence in your life. Maybe it's not even, I mean, this is like, I never know if it's Harlequin or Harlequin romances, but it's like that stereotypical guy who's like the perfect guy. That's what, that's what the Knight of Cups is. Now, um, it's in the upright position, so it's not somebody pretending to be the perfect guy. But, um, you know, that kind of a, a, a person that could be coming in, um, for you, but it's a contrast from a Taurus or a, a 
an earth sign who is maybe very business oriented, maybe very materialistic. And this is not, this was not getting fed. That, that um, part that touches the, the wisdom of life. Maybe it's all about the business of life and not the wisdom of life. And now you got the soulful connection. So it could be on the, on the uh, romantic front. It could be that you're doing something that is more creative and more in alignment with what you're all about, Virgo. But whatever it is, um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below this video. Um, otherwise, have a great first half of November. Bye.